they're great. And I want to thank everybody in this room and everybody all throughout the country, throughout the world, if you want to really know the truth. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. We will be united and strong like never before. We will save and strengthen America, and we will fight the onslaught of radicalism, socialism, and indeed, it all leads to communism once and for all. That's what it leads to. You'll be hearing more and more about that as we go along, but that's what it leads to. You know that. We all knew that the Biden administration was going to be bad, but none of us even imagined just how bad they would be and how far left they would go. He never talked about this. We would have those wonderful debates. He would never talk about this. We didn't know what the hell he was talking about, actually. <laughs> His campaign was all lies, talked about energy. I thought, I said, you know, this guy actually, he's okay with energy. He wasn't okay with energy. He wants to put you all out of business. He's not okay with energy. He wants windmills, the windmills. The windmills that don't work when you need them. Joe Biden has had the most disastrous first month of any president in modern history. That's true. Already, the Biden administration has proven that they are anti-jobs, anti-family, anti-borders, anti-energy, anti-women, and anti-science. In just one short month, we have gone from America first to America last. You think about it, right? America last. There is no better example than the new and horrible crisis on our southern border. We did such a good job. It was all worked. Nobody's ever seen anything like we did, and now he wants it all to go to hell. When I left office just six weeks ago, we had created the most secure border in U.S. history. We had built almost 500 miles of a great border wall. That helped us with these numbers, because once it's up, you know, they used to say, a wall doesn't work. Well, you know what I've always said? Walls and wheels, those are two things that will never change. The wall has been amazing. It's been incredible, and little sections of it to complete. They don't want to complete it. They don't want to complete little sections in certain little areas. They don't want to complete, but it's had an impact that nobody would have even believed. It's amazing, considering that the Democrats' number one priority was to make sure that the wall would never, ever get built, would never, ever happen, would never get financed. We got it financed. We ended catch and release, ended asylum fraud, and brought illegal crossings to historic lows. When illegal aliens trespass across our borders, they were promptly caught, detained, and sent back home. And these were some rough customers, I want to tell you. Some rough customers were entering our country. It took the new administration only a few weeks to turn this unprecedented accomplishment into a self-inflicted humanitarian and national security disaster. By recklessly eliminating our border, security measures, controls, all of the things that we put into place, Joe Biden has triggered a massive flood of illegal immigration into our country, the likes of which we have never seen before. They're coming up by the tens of thousands. They're all coming to take advantage of the things that he said that's luring everybody to come to America. And we're one country. We can't afford the problems of the world as much as we'd love to. We'd love to help, but we can't do that. So they're all coming because of promises and foolish words. Perhaps worst of all, Joe Biden's decision to cancel border security has single-handedly launched a youth migrant crisis that is enriching child smugglers, vicious criminal cartels, and some of the most evil people on the planet. You see it every day. Just turn on the news. You'll see it every day. Under my administration, we stopped the child smugglers. We dismantled the criminal cartels. We greatly limited drug and human trafficking to a level that nobody actually thought was possible, and the wall helped us a lot. And we protected vulnerable people 
from the ravages of dangerous predators. And that's what they are, dangerous, dangerous predators. But the Biden administration has put the vile coyotes back in business, and it has done so in a very, very big way. Under the new administration, catch and release has been restored. Can you imagine? We work so hard. Catch, you know what that is. You catch them, you take their name. They may be killers, they may be rapists, they may be drug smugglers. You take their name and you release them into our country. We did the opposite. We not only didn't release them, we had them brought back to their country. Illegal immigrants are now being apprehended and released along the entire southern border, just the opposite of what it was two months ago. They weren't coming because they couldn't get in. Once they think they can get in, they're coming, and they are coming at levels that you haven't even seen yet. By the hundreds of thousands, by the millions, they'll be coming. The Biden administration is now actively expediting the admission of illegal migrants, enabling them to lodge frivolous asylum claims, and admitting them by the thousands and thousands and thousands a day crowded together in unsanitary conditions despite the ongoing economic and public health crisis, COVID-19, or as I call it, the China virus. There's no masks. There's no double masks. That was a new one that came out two weeks ago. First, Fauci said, you don't need masks, no masks, no good, no one else. Then all of a sudden, he wanted them. Now he wants double masks. No social distancing, no nothing, no nothing. They're together, and it's sad, actually, and it's sad for them, and it's sad for our country. What the Biden administration is doing to push young migrants into the hands of human traffickers and coyotes is dangerous, immoral, and indefensible. Hard to believe it's happening. Biden has failed in his number one duty as chief executive, enforcing America's laws. This alone should be reason enough for Democrats to suffer withering losses in the midterms and to lose the White House decisively four years from now. Actually, as you know, they just lost the White House, but it's one of those things. But who knows? Who knows? I may even decide to beat them for a third time, okay? Beat them for a third time. True. Joe Biden defunded the border wall and stopped all future construction, even on small open sections that just needed to be finished up. Routine little work. It's already been bought. Wait till the contractors get to them and they say, no, it costs us much more money not to finish the small section than if we finished it. That's going to be nice. Wait till you see those bills start pouring in. He revoked the executive order cracking down on deadly sanctuary cities. He has effectively ordered a shutdown of ICE, halting virtually all deportations. Everyone, murderers, everybody, no more. Let's not deport people. And restricting our law enforcement professionals, and they are great professionals. You have many of them represented here today. From conducting almost any immigration enforcement of any kind. The Biden policy of releasing criminals into the U.S. interior is making America into a sanctuary nation where criminals, illegal immigrants, including gang members and sex offenders, are set free into American communities. They have no idea who's coming up. And remember, with the caravans, these countries 
not only the three of them, but many, many countries all over the world, they're not giving us their best and their finest because they're intelligent. They're not giving us their best and their finest. Remember I said that. I said that a long time ago when I made the first remarks when I came down the escalator with our great future First Lady. Who says hello. Who loves you as much as I love you. But I said that a long time ago, and we turned out to be 100 percent correct. Biden's radical immigration policies aren't just illegal. They're immoral, they're heartless, and they are a betrayal of our nation's core values. It's a terrible thing that's happening. The Republican Party must hold Joe Biden and the Democrats accountable. They ripped up the diplomatic agreements we negotiated with Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador to shut down illegal immigration. You know, they got a fortune. They got paid $500 million a year. When I came into office, those countries were refusing to take back illegal alien gang members, including MS-13, the most vicious, probably, of them all. No matter where you go in the world, MS-13, they do things that even the worst don't think about. So I asked, how much do we pay these countries? How much do we pay them? Sir, we pay them approximately $500 million a year. It's a lot of money. I mean, it's peanuts compared to the way other countries rip us off, but that's a lot of money. I said, OK, we aren't going to pay them anymore because they wouldn't take back the criminals. And this was true with the Obama administration. It was true for many, many years. So we'd catch a murderer. We'd want to bring him back to Guatemala or Honduras or El Salvador. They wouldn't take him back. No, we don't want him. We'd fly him in. They wouldn't let the plane land. We'd bus him in. They wouldn't let the buses get anywhere near the border. And I said, we're not going to pay him anymore. So after I said that, and I stopped payment, you know, like a term that we use in the world of business, let's stop payment. So we stopped payment. They were delinquent. We stopped payment. And they very quickly came to the table, and we made a deal, very quick deal. We still kept the money. We still didn't pay because <laughs> but we made a deal. And when illegal aliens came across our border, they were rapidly deported and lovingly accepted by those countries from where they came. And it worked out great. So now they accept the people. And then we ultimately got along very well with those countries, those three countries, and many countries throughout the world, because they respected us again. They didn't respect us. They couldn't believe what they were getting away with. But now Joe Biden has wrecked this great deal, wrecked it. And they're already doing what they were doing before, and they're taking the money. And that's just a small portion of what's going on. To top it all off, the Biden people are pushing a bill that would grant mass amnesty for millions of illegal aliens while massively expanding chain migration. That's where you come in and everybody comes in, your grandmother, your father, your mother, your brother, your cousins. They come in so easily, so, so crazy. So crazy. It even requires that the U.S. government provide illegal border crossers with taxable funded lawyers. Lawyers. Anybody need a good lawyer? You can't have one. They get the lawyers. They get lawyers. They're probably very good, too. The Democrat immigration bill is a globalist corp. You take a look at the corporatists. Big tech attack on hardworking citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. And Republicans must ensure that it never is allowed to become federal law, which is what they want to do. We must stand tall in the party. We have to do this. We have to stand tall as the party for law-abiding Americans and others when they're in our country. Border security is just one of the many issues on which the new administration has already betrayed the American people. He didn't talk about this stuff. I debated him. He wasn't talking about this. He wasn't what he signed with those executive orders. They weren't things that were discussed. We didn't know all about 
him and the press because they're fake news. They're the biggest fakers there are. But the press refused to ask the questions. And when I asked the questions on television, on the debate, Chris Wallace in this case and others refused to let him answer. They refused to let him answer the questions. Maybe we could have found something, or if the media did its job, which they don't. Their callous indifference to working families is equally clear when it comes to the critical matter of getting America's children back to school. And they must get back and get back right now. Right now. Crazy. Terrible. Terrible. The Biden administration is actually bragging about the classroom education they are providing to migrant children on the border, while at the same time, millions of American children are having their futures destroyed by Joe Biden's anti-science school closures. Think of it. We're educating students on the border, but our own people, the children of our citizens, citizens themselves, are not getting the education that they deserve. There's no reason whatsoever why the vast majority of young Americans should not be back in school immediately. The only reason that most parents do not have that choice is because Joe Biden sold out America's children to the teachers' unions. His position is morally inexcusable. You know that. Joe Biden has shamefully betrayed America's youth, and he is cruelly keeping our children locked in their homes. No reason for it whatsoever. They want to get out. They're cheating the next generation of Americans out of the future that they deserve, and they do deserve this future. They're going to grow up, and they're going to have a scar. It's a scandal of the highest order and one of the most craven acts by any president in our lifetimes. It's the teachers' union. It's the votes. And it shouldn't happen. And I have — nobody has more respect for teachers than I do. And I'll bet you a lot of the people within that union, they agree with everything I'm saying. Even The New York Times is calling out the Democrats. The mental and physical health of these young people is reaching a breaking point. Tragically, suicide attempts have skyrocketed, and student depression is now commonplace and at levels that we've never seen before. The Democrats now say we have to pass their $1.9 trillion boondoggle to open schools, but a very small part of it has to do with that. You know where it's going. It's going to bail out badly run Democrat cities, so much of it. But billions of dollars for schools remain unspent from the COVID relief bills that were passed last year. So on behalf of the moms, dads, and children of America, I call on Joe Biden to get the schools open and get them open now. It'd be a great thing to do. When I left office, and we're very proud of this because this was something that they said could not be done, the FDA said it. Everybody said it. Any article you read said it. Couldn't be done. It would be years and years. I handed the new administration what everyone is now calling a modern-day medical miracle. Some say it's the greatest thing to happen in hundreds of years, hundreds of years. Two vaccines produced in record time, with numerous others on the way, including the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that was approved just yesterday. And therapeutic relief also, if you're sick. If you're sick, we have things now that are incredible, what has taken place over the last year under our administration. It would have taken any other president at least five years, and we got it done in nine months. Everyone says five years, so five years. Can you imagine if you had 
to go through what all of the countries of the world who are now getting the vaccine or soon will be getting it from various companies. But can you imagine if all of those countries had to go through what they've been going through over the last year? You'd lose hundreds of millions of people. I pushed the FDA like they have never been pushed before. They told me that loud and clear. They have never been pushed like I pushed them. I didn't like them at all. But once we got it done, I said, I now love you very much. What the Trump administration has done with vaccines has, in many respects, perhaps saved large portions of the world, not only our country, but large portions of the world. Not only did we push the FDA far beyond what the bureaucrats wanted to do, we also put up billions and billions of dollars, 10 billion, to produce the vaccines before we knew they were going to work. It was called a calculated bet or a calculated risk. We took a risk because if we didn't do that, you still wouldn't have the vaccines. You wouldn't have them for a long time. So think of that. We took this, this bet. We made a bet because we thought we were on a certain track. But you'd be starting to make them right now. It would be a long time before you ever saw them. It takes 60 to 100 days to manufacture and inspect new doses. And that means that 100 percent of the increased availability that we have now was initiated by our administration, 100 percent. In fact, the director of National Institutes of Health, Francis Collins, he's Fauci's boss, actually. I think he's a Democrat, too, by the way, recently said that our Operation Warp Speed was absolutely breathtaking and that the Trump administration deserves full credit, which we do. And as conservatives and Republicans, never forget that we did it. Never let them take the credit, because they don't deserve the credit. They just followed now. They're following our plan. But this has been something that they really call — they call it a — an absolute miracle. Joe Biden is only implementing the plan that we put in place. And if we had an honest media, which we don't, they would say it loud and clear. By the time I left that magnificent house at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, almost 20 million Americans had already been vaccinated. 1.5 million doses were administered on my final day alone. 1.5 million in a day. Yet Biden said just a few days ago that when he got here, meaning the White House, there was no vaccine. He said, there's no vaccine. Oh, good. Say it again, Joe. <laughs> now, I don't think he said that, frankly, in a malicious way. I really don't. I actually believe he said that because he didn't really know what the hell was happening. <laughs> but Never let them forget, this was us. We did this. And the distribution is moving along according to our plan. And it's moving along really well. Uh, we had the military, what they've done, our generals and all of the people, what they've done is incredible. But remember, you know, we took care of a lot of people, including, I guess, on December 21st, we took care of Joe Biden, because he got his shot. He got his vaccine. He forgot. It shows you how unpainful that vaccine shot is. So everybody go get your shot. He forgot. So it wasn't very traumatic, obviously, but he got a shot. And it's good that he got a shot. Last year, I predicted to you that the extremism, corruption, and incompetence of the Biden administration would be literally unprecedented in American history. Unfortunately, he has proven me 100 percent right. Already, as President, Biden has urged Congress to pass legislation 
shredding your Second Amendment. Your Second Amendment is in far bigger trouble than you know. And for four years, I fought like hell to save your Second Amendment, and we saved it 100 percent. We saved it. He signed an order to conduct politically correct, far-left indoctrination trainings in every department of the federal government, including the U.S. military, after I had terminated these horrible things that were being preached to our military. And he wants it to go forward. It's insane. Within his first few hours, Biden eliminated our national security travel bans on nations plagued by terrorism. His first priority was to open our borders to unvetted travelers from Libya, Yemen, Syria, Somalia, and many other countries where strict vetting cannot occur. Countries that have tremendous problems, countries with tremendous terrorism problems. We did a travel ban. It was a real achievement. We told those countries, sorry, straighten out your act. We don't want people coming in where they had an ideology or a problem. We just couldn't have it. And it was incredible how it worked was incredible. And he terminated it. We had to get it approved. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court of the United States. We got it approved, and he terminates it. In addition, he's already increased refugee admissions by nearly 10 times, but in effect, it'll soon be hundreds of times as millions of people flow up through our soon-to-be open borders. And by the way, the Border Patrol and ICE, these are some of the great heroes of our country. These are incredible people. I got to know them very well. Your family still cannot go out to eat at local restaurants, but Joe Biden is bringing in thousands upon thousands of refugees from all over the world, people that nobody knows anything about. We don't have crime records. We don't have health records. What are they bringing in with them? When I left office, we had virtually ended the endless wars. These endless wars, they go on forever. They go on forever. I would go to Dover, and I would see caskets, coffins coming in. I'd see the parents and the wives and the husbands. I would see the kids. Endless wars, 19 years in Afghanistan. We have it down to almost Nothing left, and I hear they might want to go back in. Uh, Iraq. Remember, I used to say, don't go in, but if you're going to go in, keep the oil. Well, we went in, and we didn't keep the oil. We had made historic peace deals in the Middle East, like nobody thought were even possible. With not a drop of bloodshed. And by the way, not one American soldier has been killed in Afghanistan in over a year. Think of that. Not one. Those troops have largely come home. At the same time, the new administration unilaterally withdrew our crippling sanctions on Iran, foolishly giving away all of America's leverage before negotiations have even begun. Leave the sanctions, negotiate. Does anybody understand what I'm saying here? Right. Are there any good business people? You don't have to be a good — are there any bad business people? They took off the sanctions. They took off the sanctions. They say, well, we're going to not have any sanctions. Let's negotiate a deal. I don't know, Matt Schlapp. I don't think you would have done that. Do you think so, Matt? I don't think so. Mercedes wouldn't have. <laughs> no, you do that. You make a deal, and then you do what they wanted. I, I will tell you something, and I said it. Had we had a fair election, the results would have been much different, and we would have had a deal. We would have had a deal with Iran within the first week. They wanted those sanctions off. He took them off for nothing, for nothing. Now you watch how tough they negotiate. In another horrendous surrender, he agreed to get back into the World Health Organization. for approximately $500 million a year, which is what we were paying. When I withdrew from the WHO, and you know the whole story with that, they called it badly, 
They really are puppets for China. They called and they wanted us to stay in. I said, how much are we paying? Approximately $500 million. How much is China paying? A much larger in terms of population country. Sir, they're paying $39 million. I said, why are we paying $500 million and they're paying $39? I could tell you why. Because the people that made the deal are stupid. That's why. So, so, and I had no idea how popular it was. I didn't even know if I would be able to politically because people were so happy when I did get out. But I said, so if we went in, we could get it for 39 million, which is what China, not 500 million, which is what we were stupidly paying. And they said, we can make a deal. We want you to go in. We can make a deal. Okay. And I did, I decided not to do it. But we could have had it for 39. We could have had it for the same as China. And they decide now to go back into the World Health Organization and pay 500 million. What the hell is wrong with them? No, no. This is just, this is just emblematic. It's a tremendous amount of money, but compared to trillions, it's not. But it's a tremendous amount of money. Why would China pay 39 million and we're paying almost 500 million? Why? So we could have made the same deal that China had, 39 million, and they just say, we're going back in. We're going back into the World Health Organization. They go back in, they pay 500. It is so sad. Just like the Iran and the World Health Organization, Joe Biden put the United States back into the very unfair and very costly Paris Climate Accord without negotiating a better deal. They wanted us so badly back in. I'll tell you, they wanted us. I was getting called from all of the countries. You must come back into the Paris Accord. I said, tell me why. Give me one good reason. First of all, China doesn't kick in for 10 years. Russia goes by an old standard, which was not a clean standard, and other countries. But we get hit right from the beginning. Would have cost us hundreds of thousands and millions of jobs. It was a disaster. But they go back in. I could have made an unbelievable deal and gone back in, but I didn't want to do that. Surrendering millions of jobs and trillions of dollars to all of these other countries, almost all of them, that were in the deal. So they have favorable treatment. We don't have favorable treatment. And we just said, we're going back in. To go back in, they wanted us so badly. You could have nego negotiated. If you wanted to